the, the title of my thesis is Application of Machine Learning in the Big Data for Brawler Breeders Recorded by a Precision Feeding System. A precision feeding system was developed at the University of Alberta in 2015. It applies information and the computer technologies in poultry science. It is an innovation in poultry nutrition and management. Here is a, a, a section diagram of a precision feeding station. It has two stage. The, so the sorting stage can weigh the bird and make decisions. Feeding stage can provide feed. Each stage has two, uh, each stage has one, uh, one entrance door, one ejector panel, and two exit doors. The precision feeding system can feed individual bird automatically. When the bird walks into the sorting stage, if its real time body weight is higher than or equal to the pre assigned body weight, the bird will be ejected. If its real-time body weight is lower than the pre-assigned body weight, uh, the bird will be allowed to walk into the feeding stage where it can have the male. During the process of feeding individual bird, a lot of information can be recorded, including the bird's ID, time, feeding take, and, and body weight. According to a previous study, for one bird in one day, the average number of visits and meals were 61 and 10 respectively. So the machine learning, uh, so the precision feeding system can record big data for uh, broad breeders. Here is the problem. How can we extract meaningful information from the big data? and use the information. Machine learning is a subfield of artificial intelligence and it can complete a certain task without being explicitly programmed to, to do so. Supervised learning and unsupervised learning are the most commonly used machine learning approaches. Supervised learning uh, investigate the relationship between the input data and the output data. Unsupervised learning investigate the relationship, uh, uh, investigate the relationship uh, among the input data. This figure shows a workflow for the machine learning it includes the data pre-processing, learning, and evaluation. Compare with the statistics, when we use machine learning, we don't need to have the prior assumptions and machine learning can be used to handle a large number of, of, the, uh, of the variables and machine learning can be used for prediction. Objective for my thesis is, use, is using machine learning approaches to extract information from the big data recorded by a precision feeding system and make predictions based on the information. There are three projects in my thesis. My uh, first project was to predict daily overposition events in, uh, of individual broiler breeders. So overposition means a bird laid an egg. My second project was to detect anomalous real-time body weight recorded by a precision feeding system. My third project was to improve my first, uh, my first project regarding prediction of daily overposition events. My first project is, uh, is 
application of random forest classification to predict the daily overposition events in broiler breeders fed by precision feeding system. And this study has been published in computers and electronics in agriculture. So why do we need to know which bird laid? Because in the flock, some birds might stop laying due to improper nutrition or, or disease. So it is very important for the bird management to identify the non-laying birds. Uh, due to the environmental factor and the hormone, follicle maturation can be can be uh, can be uh, uh, variables. So it is difficult to know the day and time of overposition for free run birds, on, uh, unless we use the trap nest. In this project, it was hypothesized that feeding activity recorded by a precision feeding, uh, precision feeding system would be associated with daily overposition event of individual bird. Data for this study were obtained from a previous study conducted by my colleague, conducted by my colleague Sasha and the 202 breeders fed by the precision feeding precision feeding system from day 140 to day 384 were used. There were two data sets. One was recorded by the precision feeding uh, system. There were more than 2.5 million observ observ observations. The data set two was the egg record because eggs were collected on a daily basis. There were more than 35,000 overposition events. However, the original uh, variables cannot be used uh, to build the model directly. So we need to use the feature engineering uh, to uh, extract features based on time, feeding tape, and body weight. This table shows the 34 extracted features. Uh, random, random forest, which is a machine learning method for classification, was used in this pro uh, it was, in was used in this project. And the basic idea is to feed a large number of decision trees for each trees. Uh, it includes a lot of binary nodes. And we use the feature selection uh, to, uh, in feature, uh, we use the recursive feature elimination approach to select the important, uh, uh, to select the important uh, uh, features. And the 28 features were selected from the 34 features. All observations were randomly split into two parts, 90% for training and 10% for testing. So the input parameters for the model were the 28 selected features and the output uh, were one representing egg laying events and zero representing no egg laying event. This table shows the predicted result presented by the confusion, uh, confusion uh, matrix. So the confusion matrix is a commonly used tool to check the classification uh, performance. And it includes the true positive, false negative, false positive, and true negative. And based on the confusion, uh, matrix, a series of metrics were calculated to, to evaluate the model. So the overall accuracy for the model uh, was 0.84. And the precision of egg laying and no egg laying, recall of egg laying and no egg 
Lee were calculated respectively. So the kappa coefficient for the model uh, was around 0.7, indicating substantial agreement. So this study, uh, so uh, it was the first time to investigate uh, predicting over position at individual level. And the model could identify daily over position event of individual hands with 85% accuracy. So this model could be used to identify non-laying birds. So we can manage the birds by changing diet or controlling the disease. My second project is a supervised machine learning method to detect anomalies real-time body weight data of individual breeders recorded by a precision feeding system. And the manuscript has been submitted to the computers and the electronics in agriculture. So the precision feeding system can record the real-time body weight observ observations 24 hours a day. So over a long period of time, the shape of all observation of a bird is a sigmoidal curve because the birds are fed based on a pre-assigned a pre-assigned body weight curve. There were two characteristics for the recorded real-time body weight data. The first one is regularly shaped over a long period of time. The second one is irregularly scattered in one day. Fluctuation of real-time body weight results from one or several activities, including feeding intake, water intake, excretion and metabolic loss, and oviposition. However, the precision feeding system is not perfect. It sometimes records anomaly real-time body weight, as shown in the red circles. So for normal observations, it refers an observation that was similar to other observations in one day, or a deviated observation that can be explained by the activities. For anomaly observations, it refers a deviated observation that cannot be explained by the activity of a bird. Anomaly real-time body weight need to be clean because it has negative impact on the body weight estimation. Uh, there are three reasons for anomaly observations. The first one is there are multiple birds in the sorting stage at the same time. Second reason is when the precision feeding system weighs the bird, the bird is moving. The third reason is a misread of the RFID tag. Uh, there might be some leakage of electromagnetic field. So the precision feeding, uh, precision feeding system might read a bird outside, but weight a bird in, inside. So if the body weight of these two birds are different, an anomaly observation uh, will be recorded. Uh, there are some methods to remove anomalies including the statistical method and unsupervised learning uh, method. However, these methods just check statistical distributions. Manual, uh, manually labeling is very accurate, but it is time consuming and labor intensive. Objective for this, pro for this pro project was to develop a supervised learning uh, model. And we tried not only to consider statistical distribution, which aim to find the potential an anomalies, but also consider the features regarding the feeding activity of individual breeders recorded by a precision feeding uh, system, which aim to confirm the real anomalies. 
data for this pro for this project were obtained from a trial conducted by my colleague Muhammad and Nico. Fibers were randomly selected to manually label anomalies because of two reasons. First one uh, was to build supervised learning models because the manually labeled anomalies can be used at the output. The second reason is to compare with common anomaly detection methods. This table shows the manually labeled results. The number of, uh, of anomaly observations was much less than, than the number of normal observations, indicating imbalanced samples. In the feature engineering step, uh, features regarding the statistical distribution, including kurtosis and the skewness, uh, were created because it was hypothesized that uh, the anomaly observations uh, would have an, have an impact on skewness and uh, kurtosis. As a result, six features were created. Also, we considered the features regarding the feeding activity of individual birds recorded by a precision feeding system. As a, a result, we got another six features. In this project, uh, four supervised learning algorithms were used, including random, random forest artificial neural network, support of vector machine, and K nearest neighbors. F1 scores and AUPRC were used to select the best one because the uh, the F1 score and AUPRC are suitable for the imbalanced samples. For K nearest neighbor random forest support vector machines, all samples were randomly split into two parts, 80% for training and 20% for testing. For artificial neural network, all the all the observations were randomly split into three parts, 60% for training, 20% for validation, and 20% for testing. Input parameters for the model were the 12 features and output result were one representing anomalous observation and zero representing normal observation. This table shows that the random forest model had the, uh, had the highest F1 score. This figure shows that the random forest, uh, the random forest model had the highest AUPRC value. The random forest model had the best model was compared with common anomaly detection uh, detection method, including Z-scores, IQR, DP scan, and LOF. Each method was applied on each of five birds. And then the average precision recall and F1 score were calculated. This table shows the uh, final result. So the random forest, uh, the random forest, um, uh, uh, the random forest model has the highest average F1 score. Here is an example for the comparison. Uh, so the first one is the manually labeled result and its F1 score can be considered as 100%. The second feature sh shows the result detected by the random forest model, which was very similar to the manually labeled result. However, uh, for these scores, IQR, 
LOF and DB scan, they were not very effective. So the conclusion for this project is the random forest model in this project was the most effective way to detect anomaly real-time body weight data of individual broad breeders by a precision feeding system. So this approach can be used to clean the real-time body weight data set recorded by a precision feeding system. Now I'm working on developing a program for this, uh, for this model. Uh, so uh, it can, uh, so in the, near, uh, in the near future, people can use the program. My third project is using an artificial neural network to predict the probability of daily overposition events occurring of precision fed broiler breeders. Manuscript for this project has been complete and ready to submit to poetry science. There are two limitations for my first project. The first one is it could just identify daily overposition event on a subsequent day. For example, if we want to know the overposition event for day 201, we need features in 24 hours for day 201. As a result, we can just know the, uh, the overposition event on day 202 for the day 201. The second limitation was uh, it could just indicate limited information. Objective for this project was to identify daily overposition event for a day based on features on the day and to generate a probability to indicate how likely a hen laid an egg. A specific time called, uh, a specific time in one day called anchor point was used in this project and features were created around the anchor point. Data for this project were obtained from a trial con conducted by my colleague Mohammed and Nico, and it has been cleaned by the by the approach in my second project. Data for for ninety six breeders from day one hundred seventy one to day three hundred and six were used. In the trial, the RFID nest box and the traditional trap nest box. Uh, were both used. Compare with the traditional trap nest box, the RFID uh, nest box can record the exact time of OV position. In the end of the trial, 706 egg laying events were recorded by the RFID nest box, and the same number of no egg laying events were randomly selected. So for egg laying events, the anchor points uh, were known because the anchor points were the time of overposition recorded by the precision feeding system. Uh, but for the no egg laying events, anchor points were unknown. So we need to generate the anchor point for no egg laying events. Based on the distribution of 706 egg laying events during each hour, uh, no egg laying events during each hour were randomly selected from 706 no egg laying events. As a result, the number of no egg laying events during each hour was equal to that of egg laying event during the corresponding hour. For each no egg laying events, the exact time was randomly selected in the assigned hour. So the features regarding the feeding activity and the body weight change were created from four periods. The first period was the 24 hours prior to the anchor point. There were eight features that created in this period. The second period was the six hour prior to the anchor point and there are another eight features. The third period was six hour after the anchor point. So we got another eight features. The last period was the period between two consecutive visits over the anchor point. 
So we've got another two features. An artificial neural network were, uh, was used in this project, including three layers, uh, input layer, hidden layer, and output layer. All the hyperparameters have been optimized. All the observations were randomly split into three parts, 60% for training, 20% uh, for validation, and 20% for testing. The input parameters for the model were the 26 features, and the output results uh, was the probability of daily overposition event occurring. With eight epochs, the loss of the model on both training set and the validation set uh, reached around 0.25. And the accuracy of the model on both training and the validating, validation set reached around 90%. And we used the ROC and AUC to evaluate the model. So the AUC value for the model was 0.94, indicating outstanding classification performance. So most, uh, uh, the most uh, predicted results were in the range from, point, uh, from 0 to 0 0.1 and the range from 0.9 to 1. So the conclusion for this project is the, uh, the artificial neural network model could generate a probability that was informative to indicate how likely of a position of individual breeders uh, occurred in the day. So this table shows the comparison between my project one and per project three. So we can use the uh, model to generate a probability for each bird in a, in a flock. So if we know the total numbers of the egg uh, for a flock in one day, we can rank probabilities and choose those most likely to have a latent egg. Now I'm working on developing a program to, uh, 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 for, this, uh, for this model. So the, uh, the program uh, can be used in the bar soon. Uh, when I started to work on my first project, I realized that there were some anomaly real-time body weight observations. Although I tried some methods to clean them, the result were not so good. Uh, so in my second project, I worked on how to clean anomalies. Based on my project two, my, my project three improve predicting over position events. Uh, to further improve the prediction uh, in prediction performance of the models, I think we should investigate more features and evaluate the model by more data. Conclusion for this thesis was the meaningful information could be extracted from the big data recorded by the precision feeding system. And the machine learning could be built based on the information, which could be used to know the behavior of breeders. My last part is acknowledgement. First of all, I would like to thank my supervisor, Dr. Mark Rudolph. I really appreciate he provided me with this great opportunity to study at the University of Alberta. Uh, secondly, I would like to uh, thank my committee member, Dr. Edmund Law. I really appreciate he gave me a lot of suggestions in machine learning. I would like to acknowledge staff at Poetry Research uh, poetry, poetry Research uh, Center, including Carrie, Chris, Giles, Sean, and Kim. I would also like to acknowledge AI Supercomputing Hub at the University of Alberta. In the end, I would like to thank my team, 
Sasha, Sheila, Mohammed, and Nicole. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Jiho. Uh, on behalf of everyone, we'll have, we'll have our applause. Um, at this time, I would uh, invite questions for Ji Hao. Uh, I'll just remind the examining committee that your turn will come. Uh, so uh, from the general audience, not from the uh, examining committee, please uh, just unmute yourself and, uh, and ask Ji Hao a question. If you like, uh, I don't prefer it, but you can also use the chat, uh, but I would prefer that you uh, ask your question uh, verbally. I have a question, if that's okay. right. Uh, um, I see Irene, is that right? Oh, Sasha. Yeah, sorry. I think okay, we spoke sorry. at the Go same ahead. time. Okay. Um, great presentation, Zhao. Um, really cool to see where that data that I once back in the day collected went. It looks really promising how you can filter that data. Um, I was just wondering, um, if you're the random forest model that you worked with on the body weights, filtering out those anom anomalies, did you also include information on the feed intake in those um, models or was it just the body weight data that you fed into it? Uh, okay, thanks for your questions. And I can show you uh, the features. Oh. I might just have missed it. But it was a lot of information, so yeah. Okay, so here, yeah, uh, because uh, based on the time uh, feeding tape and and the body weight, I extract yeah. the thirty four features, including age, uh, mean, and the standard deviation of body weight in one day, and the feeding tape in each hour. Okay, no, I, sorry, I, I uh, asked my question wrong. It was actually for project number two. So in project oh. number one, you identified that body weights had anomalies, okay. they had yeah. strains. Did you use feed intake information in your second project or not? Yes, because in my second project, I include some features like uh, here. Yeah, because I consider the- Oh yeah, yeah. Feeding uh, the the feeding tape. So here we use the feeding tape here. The ratio of the ADNO of an obser observations over over the some feeding tape in one day. Okay. So so my second question is more than the applicability of this because you know that not every barn has a precision feeding system, but a lot of barns have just body weight systems. Do you think that you could do your um, your second project, like filtering the anomalies in weights, also with just body weight information that you get from a barn, like take a regular breeder barn with hanging skills? Uh, I think uh, for this question, I'm not sure because for my second project, uh, so so actually I need to consider the feeding activities for individual bird record update by the precision feeding system because okay. this information uh, it is very important. So, okay. yeah, but I'm not sure if this approach can be used in the, uh, in the bar uh, okay. uh, uh, without the precision feeding system. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you, Sasha. Irene, go ahead. Great presentation. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Um, so for your second project, yeah, yeah. Uh, you said that you picked five birds. And yeah. I'm wondering how you selected those five birds and why just five birds? Yeah, actually, we uh, there were about 96 birds in total. And we just randomly selected 
the fibers because we need to label anomalies. As you can see, there are a lot of, uh, there are more than 60, uh, 60 thousands observations. So we were not able to manually label all of the birds. So uh, as a result, we can just uh, uh, choose a few of them. Okay, so you randomly picked them. Yeah. Okay, perfect. And can I ask one more question? Sure. Okay, so this is for your project number three. Okay. Um, so you were talking about improving the prediction performance. Yeah. Um, and so I was wondering, um, I know that in Sasha's study uh, a long time ago, she did egg palpations. And I was wondering if you, you can use palpating for eggs as a way to improve prediction performance for your project? Uh, I don't think so, because for my third project, I need to know the exact time uh, to, uh, because, the, it, because the exact time need to be used at the, uh, as, the, uh, as, the, uh, as the anchor time, uh, at the anchor point. Uh, so I know that uh, Sasha did the palpation, but for the uh, but the palpation can just help us to know which bird laid an egg in the day, and it can not uh, it cannot uh, help us to know the exact time of the over position. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Does anyone else have a question? Go in once. Hi, Jiha. Hi, Mohammed. This is Mohammed. I have a question. A great presentation. Thanks. I'm just wondering in your random forest uh, approach, yeah. did you use all of your data at some points as training sets and testing sets? Or how was your uh, strategy to select the data for a training set or testing set? Okay, so before I answer your uh, question, uh, I would like to show you the, the uh, one of the figures, so here, so in machine, uh, in machine learning workflow, uh, we usually uh, split the all observations into two parts. The big part is for training and the small part is for testing. Uh, so we, in this project, we, uh, we, randomly uh, split all the observations into two parts, 90% for training and 10% for testing. Okay, sounds good. So do you think if somebody else repeat this uh, approach and you know, uh, select different data for uh, training set and different data for testing set, will it, they come up with the same results as you did or not? Uh, okay. Uh, uh, for this question, I uh, because I didn't use another data to uh, evaluate the model. So in the future, I would like to try that. Perfect, thank you, Jihan. Thanks, Mohammed. 